I will go ahead and turn it over to Martha Perez, who will get us started with today's webinar. Martha? Thank you very much, Holly, for that nice introduction. So I am going to start sharing my screen and welcome everyone. I really appreciate you taking the time off of your busy schedule to meet with us today here on this training where we're going to share some important information on how to generate reports. Please feel free to enter your name, your agency's name, your email in the chat pod if you have a chance once you arrive to the training so we can take attendance for you. And then um, if you have any other questions in regards to whatever I'm explaining at the moment, you can also feel free to post your question in the chat pod. Our team uh, with uh, Tyler Fu and Nicole Jordan will be monitoring the chat pod. And also uh, Tyler Fu will be co-hosting with me. So he will be um, also explaining some important information on our reports. Okay, so I am displaying now the CASA's homepage. I don't know if you can all uh, see that on, on the screen. If you can type in yes or something on the chat pod, is that being displayed right now? Perfect. Thank you so much. All right, welcome everyone. Okay, so our CASA's website has a wealth of documentation and the information that we'll be sharing today is based off on one of the uh, training materials that we have in the TOPS Pro in the CASA's website, um, especially here under the training and support link, it will display all of the documentation that we have available. And for today's training, we will go to the ETAS online help link. And don't worry about this. I am going to post this link into the chat pod. But if you see, there's a wealth of documentation. There's many downloadable PDF files here. Uh, the one that we're gonna be using for today's training is called Tops Pro Enterprise Basics generating reports. So if you download this link, you will have this activity packet and we're going to share all this information on how to generate basic reports. Let me go ahead and post that link on the chat pod. And this is our session for today. So Tops Pro Enterprises, you can read off from here, uh, offers a numerous amount of uh, reports that benefits teachers, data managers, clerks, and other people or staff who have um, access to Tops Pro Enterprise. So uh, these reports will meet a variety of essential needs like uh, report, like reporting for CAPE, for instance, and reporting for other um, funding as well, and for the own purpose of the teacher and the data manager. So these are the specific sections that we are looking today, the report generator, we're generating reports using the drill down option, charts and graphs, reports manager, and my reports. So uh, if you have access to this, to this document, and you can, you're welcome to download it and print it if you like, or just download it into your computer so you can review it later. So we're going to start off by uh, showing how to install an open Tops Pro Enterprise. Um, I, I assume, or I may inquire, like how many of you are new oh. to, to Tops Pro Enterprise? Probably there's a lot of you who are experienced users, but some of you, I know that for sure, that are new agencies on board that definitely are new. Oh, thank you, Anna. Thank you, Kathy, Cynthia. I see that you guys, you folks are, are new to Tops. Oh, brand spanking new. Perfect, Richard. Thank you so much for letting us know. Uh, Daniel, thank you. We are actually uh, going to focus, you know, special attention on you folks because I know it's uh, Tops Pro Enterprise. It's a lot to the program, but I hope that you were attending some of the Tops Pro Enterprise Basics trainings with Oscar in the previous uh, days, uh, weeks before. Um, otherwise, we can always refer you to the recorded webinars that CAPE has on their webpage. Also, um, 
yeah, we can probably post a link a little bit later for those uh, recorded webinars for the Tops Pro Enterprise Basics. But we do also have a YouTube channel where you can go to them and um, also verify a few of the recordings that we have for generating basic reports in Tops Pro Enterprise and also for Tops Pro Enterprise Basics. Okay. Um, so starting off on how to install TOPS Pro Enterprise, I'm going to switch over to my other window in here and take you to the website that you need in order to download and install TOPS Pro Enterprise, which is the ca.etestsonline.org. That is a website exclusively for the California um, staff or California users, uh, please use this ca.etestonline.org. Uh, a very few, a very few users will use another um, URL, which is called uh, etestonline.org slash Laric, which is for the Laric Consortium. But if you're not a member of this consortium, then the ca.etestonline.org will help us for all the needs. Oh, thank you, uh, Holly. She posted the URL where you can access previous webinars. So I do recommend saving the chat before we leave the room at the end of the training. So you can have accessibility to all those hyperlinks, which are gonna be helpful. All right, so once we get to the ca.etestonline.org website, we have this install to e client on the top left-hand corner, which is the one that you need to click on in order to download the Tops Pro Enterprise application. If you can see on your bottom left corner of the screen, you're gonna have this little pop-up box for you to open it up and install it in your computer. What that does at this time, it's uh, saving a shortcut on your desktop and it, it'll, it will also um, install the software. So you will require a Windows 10 computer now I will minimize my Tops Pro Enterprise because I already had another window open in the background. And we will also um, sign in by using the Rolling Hills simulation server. Now back to the document I wanted to add that you can find, I'm gonna go back to the CASA's website here for just a moment and pointing you over to the Rolling Hills simulation server so you can know how to log in. And folks, I encourage you highly to use the Rolling Hills simulation server. Um, for that, I only type Rolling Hills on the search box and search for that. So the Rolling Hills simulation server is this little document PDF that will allow you to know how to log in. It gives you all the important information as user accounts, emails or user accounts and passwords as well. So here is all of that information. I just posted a link on the chat pod so you can also download that information, okay? So now, Back to the Tops Pro Enterprise, using that document, I, I just sent you a link. I'm going to log in as an administrator, which has the same level of access that a lot of you folks over at your local agency have as administrator, so you can have uh, basic control over the database, over who accesses the Tops Pro Enterprise database, over who generates reports, and you can basically view everything from here as, long, as well as test results from your students and, and whatnot. So this is a new start page that is pretty recent since uh, I guess around June, July, we have this new start page, which has a lot of information in there, which gives you like shortcuts on how to do uh, important things like you see here, you'll get to the demographics lister or get to any of the other listers that are um, listed over here, as well as shortcuts, or I'm sorry, this is shortcuts and how to. If we click on any of these hyperlinks, it takes us straight to that lister, to the, to the student demographics lister. All right, so if I close this tab, 
it will take me back to the start page. So as you can see, you can open new links and they will open on new tabs, uh, just like you would do with an Excel spreadsheet, for instance. All right, so we are going to start off by closing this start page since um, we don't need to describe that anymore. Um, and today's webinar is based on reports. So the reports drop-down menu contains several sub-menus of categories, as you can see in here, of Tops Pro Enterprise reports. Each sub-menu includes reports that all relate to the similar topics. So by scrolling down to each category, you can find out which reports that specific section contains. And if you can hover your mouse over the next um, sub-menu, you can see that it even unfolds other important reports based on that same category. Okay, so based on that, uh, the, stuff, the next uh, pages on the generating reports document, including pages four, five, and six, number six and seven, describe all these reports, what they are all about. So I would highly encourage you folks to go over all of these, um, this document, so you can see and read out about what these reports are about. Now, today we're going to focus on the CAVE reports. So um, Tops Pro Enterprise holds off those state reports or those CAPE reports under the state reports menu. As you can see, the California CAPE reports are all enabled on the Rolling Hills database. So you can come along here and practice all you want, all you can. And actually, I would dare you to try to break something in Tops Pro Enterprise because it in the Rolling Hills database because it cannot be, you know, um, broken. Tops Pro Enterprise database for the Rolling Hills will actually help you generate all kinds of reports that you'd like and um, practice them here before you generate them on your own database or just go to your own database and generate them from there. All right, so uh, we're going to start with the report generator on page number eight. So we're going to open um, the CAPE, let's go ahead and open the CAPE Data Integrity. Again, um, you can follow the links right here, click on Reports, State Reports, California, CAPE Data Integrity. So when we open the CAPE Data Integrity Report, if, especially if you're new to Tops Pro Enterprise, this can be a little bit overwhelming. Now, Please do not get scared or anything. What I'm going to do is I'm going to collapse all these sections in here. So it's not that intimidating per se. Um, each report has two very important main sections. We have the report setup navigator on your left-hand side, which you can see right here on the left. And then we also have the report setup toolbar which is right up here, as well as all these sections. So the toolbar contains several subsections and each report could be a little bit different under subsections. But I will go ahead and explain one by one subsection so you can see that it's not, there's not a lot to it that you can get intimidated for. So don't worry about it. We're gonna start with the first section here in the report setup toolbar, which is the session name. And this is automatically uh, set up here by default. Uh, it has the name of the report written down, as well as the date, the time, and by whom this report is being generated. You are also welcome to type in any other additional comment about this session, so you can definitely, you know, write in any extra extra text in there. You're not obligated to. Uh, you can also change this par these parameters right here by deleting any of that information and so on. So I will just put that back. And, um, and this is for the first section, which is the session name. I'll go ahead and collapse that and go over the common filters. Now, common filters have very important information contained in here. 
And this is part of the general settings. So um, my colleague, Tyler, I don't know if you um, would like to go ahead and uh, explain this section as it is in page number nine, Tyler. Yes, hi everyone. Um, thank you for uh, 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 letting me explain the common filters, Martha. So the common filters is, um, these are filtered by date. Uh, so by default, we always have the program, current program year um, highlighted, uh, but we can always go back uh, previous, previous years, uh, 2019, 2018, 2017. Uh, as you can see there, we have those choices. Um, the programs available by default, the, the system always has for APE, ESL, uh, high school, HSC. Uh, we will always have those by default. Um, those will show up. Um, and if we want, you know, we can always uh, add any additional uh, programs in there, such as CTE or workplace, workforce uh, preparation. Um, and those are uh, optional if you if you like to add those. Um, date ranges. For for uh, for TE, we do have uh, automatic uh, a date system. So anytime um, we we have a new program year or something, it will change to that uh, program year. So any date that you do for activity date, let's say we did it for uh, we filter for let's say yesterday. We can even do yesterday. It will show up for nine eight. Uh, 2020. <clears throat> Thank you, Martha. So we can also do a custom interval, um, any date range that we'd like to add into there. Uh, we can, you know, pick any date we like. So that's for the activity date. Uh, for the output layout parameters, uh, we, we can sort um, by agency, if we like, we as we can see right there, we have it for agency, um, and I believe it's uh, uh, selected and it's in uh, ascending order. And um, if we look down right there, where Martha's cursor is, um, we do we could remove all of them also. Um, for other reports, we do have more options, but this one we only have agency available. Um, did you want to add anything to that, Martha? Um, I just wanted to verify that you have these other options as well, like warn if too many pages, include criteria, info, prepared by, print name. So all of these features will be automatically included into the printout report, into the final report once it's generated. So um, these will be automatically included by default. If there's anything that you wouldn't like to display on your report, you can always uh, uncheck it, uncheck it from here so it doesn't get displayed. In, in any case, you would like to hide, you know, the criteria information as well as prepared by. Um, and we'll, we'll go over these functions or these features again once we generate the report so you can see the before and after when we do this. So right now uh, we're going to proceed with the next two sections and then we're going to go ahead and generate the report on a default mode. On a default mode means that as is. When you click on the generating button, we don't have to do any changes before we generate. So you can see the before and after, okay? Thanks, Martha. I just wanted to add something. Um, so the the output can be pretty detailed um, as, as for the agency print option. Um, if you can point to that right there, Martha, uh, we can actually change that to whatever ID, if we want to show um, just the agency ID or the name or both, even ID and name, or uh, switch that around and put name and ID, it can get really uh, pretty technical. Uh, so, you know, however we'd like to uh, have our preference set, it's uh, definitely uh, useful there. And also, um, as Martha points out right there, it's, uh, it's also possible to change the color scheme of the reports so right there, we have a blue color scheme. Uh, we have green, red, black, and white. 
um, you know, it's definitely all preference on how we want to uh, show our reports. Exactly. There are some customizable options in there. Mm -hmm. Great. So uh, now special options. Um, I think this report actually runs on certain drop reasons that the student needs to meet or some, some of these uh, reasons that the student needs to meet, otherwise they will be dropped from the report. And these are instated in there uh, according to the funding, the funding of the program. So if we're doing CAPE reports, these reports will be run off of these several drop reasons in here. Um, if the student does not meet some of these uh, drop reasons, they will not make it over to the report. Okay, so they need to have this uh, birthday. They need to have at least 12 hours of instruction, not to be concurrently enrolled. Um, they need to have a gender. They need to have some ethnicity or race placed in there and no accurate placement for test, as well as CSL learner pretest score at, and this is a little bit small, so at ASC educational functioning level. So as you can see, you can scroll these, use these scroll bars up and down so you can read throughout the entire um, legend of the drop reasons. And the other section is the monitor drill down options. There are some drill down options that Tyler will explain a little bit later in regards to our, our reports. So as you can see here, show test pairs uh, as completed level shows as a default. So all this re these reports already have some defaults embedded into them. And that would be my suggestion to mainly run those reports off of the defaults, unless you would like to see some very specific information for a certain date range, for a certain student, you can also do that. Make your own preferences or searches on on the report setup navigator on the left hand side. So uh, these are also customizable, right? The student name format would be in, in the default mode, which will start with the last name and then the first name. So all these options, like I said, you can change them, you can customize them and also uh, change them as is. So now that we have explained all these sections, I hope that they're not as intimidating for new users. Now you know that you can exactly, you know, change, add or remove, or just leave as is, which is what I'm going to do right now. I'm going to delete all these dates that we made these customizable for. And I believe that would be the only change that we did for this report. Now, before generating the report, I would like to also let you know that you can filter for specific uh, or run it for specific sites, for specific classes, or for specific student as well. So any report can be done like that. So you can generate it as is, or you can select the site that you would like to run this report for. So you can actually run a Cape Data Integrity for a specific campus a specific site by clicking this little drop down arrow where it's got the agency's name in there. Besides doing that, you could also filter for a specific class. If you can run, if you'd like to run the Cape Data Integrity on a particular class, you can click on the class instances option from the report setup navigator. And with that, you have a, the, the entire list of classes for this entire program year. Um, now the Rolling Hills database, it's got a wealth of document, it's got a wealth of information and uh, this is all fictional data. So you can practice along with. So this is a huge agency with a bunch of classes. You can see uh, that the counter on the top area, along with all these little buttons, you have uh, 2,711 classes. You're not going to get quizzed on this. I'm just showing you so you can know the counter. Um, how many of them are existing in this database. So if I would like to generate it only for a particular uh, class, I would uncheck all of these classes by clicking this general checkbox and just checking the ones or picking and choosing the ones that I want to see on my report. 
Okay, so this is another way of uh, making some extra or additional filterings through the classes. And once I go back to general settings, the general settings will take me back. But if you observe here, you have a little check mark on the class instances. So that means that I have a particular filter that I am going through. And this is what happens when I unchecked everyone and I just picked and choose three classes, the little check box will mark, or the little check mark will place here under the class instances. All right, so I, now that I put the check marks all back, since it's the default setting, the class instances is back to normal. Uh, you can also run it for a particular student in this database, we do have that option, and that would be under the in program years filter. If we click on the in program years from your report setup navigator, it shows you a list of all the students that currently have activity in this current program year. Uh, this sorting or this list is sorted by student ID from uh, the smaller to a, a bigger to the larger um, ID number in the database. But you can also customize these by clicking on these sorting buttons. It looks like a little diamond pointing up and down, but it's actually two little arrows. If I click on this arrow, it will, as you can see, the color changed on this line right here, and it's alphabetizing this from A through Z. So I'm going to scroll up using my scroll bar at the right hand side. So this is now um, sorted by A through Z, um, regardless of these special characters because of this um, parentheses in here and all these numbers, um, it will start off from number or letter A. So from A through Z, it's all alphabetized by first by first name. So in that sense, you can also run the report on a specific student. You can run it on individual students as is. And again, the check mark will appear on the report setup navigator for in program years. And that will trigger or let you know that we have been doing some customizing or uh, sorting and filtering for specific students. Again, I'm going to click back on the general checkbox. So this puts everything back to how it was before from the general settings. So we don't have to come back to the general settings in order for you to generate the report. You can find the generate button in all of the sections that we have from the navigator. See the generate button is what is going to help us trigger and generate ultimately the, the report that we are choosing. Okay. So we're not going to make any changes to anything else. I'll just go ahead and hit the generate button so you can see the results on this report. So it usually takes a few seconds, a few moments, depending on the speed of your internet, as well as on the memory on your computer, um, and also the size of your database. If you have a very large database, this will probably take a little bit longer. But this is a final um, product here when we are selecting the report. The name is on the top area. You find the agency's information, number, member of which consortium, you have the date, the time that you are generating the report, the summary information, and you also have all the items included on your data integrity report, as well as who prepared this report. As you can see, I am logged in as administrator two. You can see that on the top right hand corner of your screen, who is logged in as yourself. Um, like right now, I'm logged in as administrator two. You also have this report viewer navigator. And this uh, report comprehends of two different pages, num page number one and page number two. Now on page number two, right at the bottom of it, you have this criteria as well, which was used and required to run this specific report. And it's just displaying here what was used on, on this database. In, the, in that case, I ran it for the entire agency of 4908, the Rolling Hills Adult School. I did not run it for a specific site because I, I wanted to generate as is. So the aggregated data means that it collects data from all the uh, different sites included in your agency. In this case, the Rolling Hills database has many, many sites and more like 
nine or eight or more. Um, so I generated for the entire agency. So some students may have records at different sites, uh, but it will be aggregated all together and put, pulled together, as well as the instructional programs and all the, regu the regular criteria for this type of report. Okay, so now this is a description of the report. As you can see, if I hover my mouse over uh, certain areas, it will highlight in red and this means that we can drill down over a specific section. So uh, Tyler will go over in a little bit. I just, before we do that, I just wanted to uh, show you a couple of more things here on this report. Um, on the report viewer navigator you'll have on your left hand side, you'll have the reporting section here with the date and the time. And then you have other um, records in here like student program year, student, all these ones that you see on your left hand side, as well as the unpin button. So you can unpin this button and have a better view of this report. And also some of the buttons in the top, you can export it, you can print it, you can see the number of pages included in the report, as well as some layout settings. If we click on this layout settings, it, it pulls up some of the information that we saw from the general settings. So you could potentially uh, remove some of these settings and apply it to it, if we see here. Like for instance, I am going to uncheck this criteria info we can then click apply and this will regenerate the same report that I just ran but I'm going to show you by scrolling down that the criteria piece has been removed. So you could do these little uh, things like ticks like some little uh, tips and tricks here in the report layout settings as well. I am going to remove include print uh, time and prepared by and you can see the difference. So I will go ahead and click apply once again and this will show you, will not show you the time because I removed the time from here as well as scrolling down. It does not show who the person uh, that generated the report as if before it had administrator two, it will not change it will just not display that so little things like that you can do I mean you're not it depends on what your needs are um, again I'm going to show you no, not these these are already done so the fit page you can fit the page in here as well as uh, fit width which is the default setting that we have and you can also fit two pages in the same in the same view does anybody have any questions? Okay, um, I hope everything of, that I've explained so far, it's, it's been uh, somewhat clear. Uh, we also have some other, other buttons like thumbnails. Thumbnails will show uh, on the right hand side, a list of the thumbnails with uh, this report. Some reports are a bit more specific um, with showing the thumbnails. I believe that this report does not display everything exactly as it should. And um, sometimes this happens when we're using the Rolling Hills database. But I would urge you to try it on your own database to see what you get from the thumbnails and any other kind of reports. I'm sure it's gonna show up in here, as well as the show summary. So show summaries will give you a highlight of all the information that could be potentially drilled down from your feature. So highlighting these numbers, it will take you over to that specific lister in the amount that you see in here. You can also uh, right click into these to right click and drill down on these specific or other items embedded in these numbers. Okay, so you can also have the edit session details by uh, clicking on the details of the general settings. I clicked on this edit session and it takes us back to the report setup navigator. So we can edit anything that we would like to do, like any more edits, it takes us back to the general settings. 
Okay, so as you can see, the report opened on another tab. So I'm returning back to the report. And you can also save the session by clicking on Keep Session. But all the reports that you generate in TOPS Pro Enterprise will actually be auto saved, automatically saved into the reports. And I will show you where you can find previous reports that you have generated over the past. Okay, so you can click on Keep Session. And that way, it disappeared our report. So how are we going to get back to the report without having to generate it? Well, we click back on the reports menu. And we click on reports manager. When I click on reports manager, it's going to show me exactly the same report that I generated a few moments ago. So maybe somebody else is signing in as administrator one or any other administrator. So I'll go ahead and click on the report that I generated as administrator two. Double click on that. And that brings me exactly to the report that I was showing you folks earlier. So as you can see, all these buttons include uh, information that you could drill down or do any other amenities on your report. Um, and then you can also click on, under the more button, you may find some additional uh, buttons depending on the size of your screen. It hides or it uh, grabs all those more buttons into the more, into the more button. So uh, Tyler, would you like to explain the feature of drilling down? Yeah, thank you, Martha. Um, would it be beneficial if we have uh, myself share my screen or we're, of course. Or we'll... absolutely okay let's I'll go ahead and stop my share so All you can right. go ahead and share your own thank you okay no problem okay so um can everyone see my screen yes yes thank you perfect okay so I have the same uh, exact uh, cape dir report uh, as Martha did um what I did was just ran uh, the, the the just this default settings right here I didn't change anything um, and you know that that may be beneficial for a lot of agencies to just uh, run the default um, and not touch anything um, so I just generated it and I have the report here and uh, we wanted to talk about uh, drilling down so the drill down uh, feature is uh, a neat little tool that TE has to let us uh, go through different hierarchies of data so that we get to the specific uh, data. Uh, and what I mean by that is that um, if, we, if we look at the DIR report, um, let's say we look at you know students with less than 12 hours of instruction. Um, we have 2,249 students and it gives us this uh, functionality to once it gets highlighted red like this right here it gives us that option to click on it and that is uh, an interactive way to kind of get down to your your specific data um, so let's let's see that example for the less than 12 hours of instruction so I click on it And Martha, also, if you want to add anything, definitely, uh, you know, let me know and, um, you know, any sure. any comments that you'd like to add. Thank you. So we have a lister of all the uh, 2,000 and some students here. Um, all students who have less than uh, 12 hours of instruction. Um, you can see that, uh, you know, there's a ton of students there. You can actually scroll down and and also see their information, their demographic information. Um, going back to the drill down, the drill down tool. So we have this lister of, of these students who have less than 12 hours. You can also click on them. Um, if let's say you want to look at a student uh, such as uh, the student Yi. Uh -huh. uh, so I can double click on Yi's uh, information here. And then we go straight into Yi's um, student information. And mm -hmm. we can, in fact, go into uh, the student's class records from the navigator. 
um, as Martha mentioned uh, earlier about the navigator, there's shortcuts into the student's uh, information. So we have um, an edit view, a student records, uh, class rec enrollments. Mm -hmm. uh, we're interested in the class records because uh, that pertains to um, the amount of hours that the student has. Mm -hmm. And as you can see, there's no uh, records at all. And right. that's just confirmation that the student doesn't have any um, class hours and it's being flagged in the uh, CAPE DIR as uh, less than 12 hours. So no hours for this student. Um, and that's, that's the benefit of having the drill down tool is because we can um, hit shortcuts um, from, from the specific DIR report. Um, exactly. Not just um, 12 hours of instruction, we can, you know, go down these categories, also no gender, uh, no race, ethnicity. Uh, these will get flagged in the DIR report, but we can always click on them. As you can see that it, it gets highlighted here. Um, so if we, you know, a popular one is uh, no valid pretest or valid pretest, no post-test. We can click on that also. Um, but we can also right click and this takes us to another, um, another screen or another uh, report or monitor. And then if we want to drill down to the NRS monitor, we can do so um, by right clicking uh, the highlighted uh, box and then clicking on drill down to NRS monitor. Exactly, that is another way of drilling down on the report. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Martha. And uh, Martha, would you explain a little bit on the NRS yes. monitor, uh, yeah, drilling absolutely. down to it? Absolutely. You can drill down on NRS monitor. You can drill down on assessments lister. You can drill down on many other options as listed on, on that drill down feature. But I'm going to um, explain here a little bit about the drop reasons that exist in this in this report. This this drill down to monitor will show you exactly the drop reason that the student is missing on the very first column. It's got a small D on the very first column, and then it will show you the drop reason, which is number two in this case, uh, the hours of instruction. The student information will be listed on the next available column, as well as the ID number, student's name, ID, and the class that they are attending or enrolled into, as well as the gender, their age, the program they're, they're enrolled into, and what kind of civics information they have as well as the hours of instruction on the next column. And then you can also see the start and end date of their period of participation. Um, this includes information as how many days the student has been absent from the instruction, as well as their pre and post test information and in regards to which form they took, when they took it, what level they scored at, what's their regular score, as well as some levels, uh, like if they get gains, the gains will be listed in here. If you could scroll a little bit further down, Ty, so we can see um, a more detailed or some information that for some students that would have some of these gains or maybe they don't have a pre and the post test probably because it's maybe too early in the in the program year. But this will show you all the detailed information. And if you would like to come back to the regular report, you can always click on that orange bar on the top area, or you can click on the, um, can you click, can you drill down again on one of these settings? Just go ahead and yeah, right click or whichever. Perfect. This is gonna take us back to the monitor, but before getting back to the report, you can also click on the report viewer navigator on your left-hand side on that second check mark that you see under Cape Data Integrity, that 9 slash 9 2020, go ahead and click on that and that will also take you back to the report. So there's no way of getting lost in here. You can always come back to the report or just regenerate it as is. 
Thank All you, right. Martha. Um, another thing I would like to add is that you can also fix some of these records from just viewing them from the report. If you uh, click on the very first line that says 01, missing birth date outside of 16 and 110, go ahead and single click on that 28, please. Let's go ahead and analyze these students and and say, let's say these are all missing the date of birth. Let's say you do have uh, the, the date of birth for Jason Dexter, which is student number one on this report. Uh, let's try to fix that by double clicking on Jason Dexter's record. When we double click on Jason Dexter's record, it takes us to their demographic information. But from the navigator on your left hand side, you're going to have this aggregation tree. If you have the aggregation tree at the bottom section, you're gonna see a couple, you'll, you'll see this indented 4908-01 highlighted in, in blue with a little L there in brackets. And if you click the edit button right at the bottom, go ahead and click that edit button. This is gonna take you to some other information, but if you scroll down, um, Okay, so this is not going to contain the desired information which we wanted to fix, but from the navigator on your left hand side, go ahead and click on uh, demographic history. If you click on demographic history, this is going to take you to the entire demographic history information of the student. So from this place, you can actually double click on that Jason Dexter's re demographic record from May 7th. So you can enter their, their date of birth. Um, okay, so address, contact, education, and identification. It's not provided in here. I'm so sorry. Go ahead and close this last tab. You're going to actually find it under this edit view. Click on edit view, please, from your navigator on the left. Okay, so hmm, this report. No, click on student records, please from the navigator on the left-hand side, student records. And here folks, I'm just trying to show you where you can um, actually cor um, correct this information. But as well as it doesn't pull up any of the fields for you to enter the uh, date of birth, you can actually click on the blue section on the top where it says student in program year information go ahead and click on that student one slash Jason Dexter. This link actually takes you straight to their demographic information where you can actually enter that date of birth. If you click on the edit button for identification, this will actually sh uh, be showing you the place where you can enter the date of birth. So go ahead and enter um, any random, let's put today's date on there, please, um, with uh, program or the year 2003, no, 2003. So at least that student has about um, 17 years of age. So now go ahead and click save. Did you save it already? Hey, Martha, it's uh, grayed out. Okay. Uh, go ahead and click on somewhere else, like on on the last name field. So now it, the, the save button pops up. Yes. Uh -huh. For some reason, it, we just needed to refresh it or something. So okay. once you have saved that information, we can always, yeah, this, this uh, is normal because this student does not have a social security number, which is somewhat of a validation. So if you know what the, what the gender of the student is uh, or they have provided that to you, you can also correct that here in the identification section. So go ahead and enter uh, the gender for Jason Dexter, please go ahead and check the mail and then go ahead and say save. But as long as they have provided you with their gender, then you can go ahead and enter that. All right, so now with that exercise that we did, we added the date of birth and we added the gender. So go ahead and close the last tab for Jason Dexter, as well as this other tab for Jason Dexter. 
and uh, the Yi Danish as well. So going back to this report setup navigator, we want to regenerate the report so we can see the difference. But first click on this orange tab, please, so we can come back and see what the numbers are. So we have 28 students in the missing birthday or outside of 16 to 110. We have fixed one of these records. So go ahead and regenerate this report. You can either close this section or go back to the, uh -huh, for the general settings and then hit the generate button. Then we are going to notice the difference between one report before fixing that record and the, after, the afterwards report after fixing that record. So it should show us potentially one student less in that item. There we go. So as you can see, folks, we have 27 students now that are missing birth date because we had drilled down on that feature and corrected that demographic piece that was missing from that item. Okay, so we have some questions here on the chat pod. It looks like Nicole has been uh, responding to some of these. Yeah, some Martha. Can I address them into the group too? Of course, thank you. Okay, um, and I'm not sure who's controlling the screen, but if you can scroll up. So here at the very top of the CAPE data integrity report, and um, just as far as this webinar is concerned, we're focusing on how to generate the reports, not exactly the content of each report. Um, but for this report in particular, to find the denominator for all the item descriptions below, you'll take that students eligible for data integrity. So in this case, it's that 6614. And if we're looking at item number one, so there's 27 students without a missing birth date, 27, per, or 27 out of the 6,000 is that 0.41%. Now, this applies to all um, programs that we've selected at the, in the filter um, before we generated. Um, so that's just something to note here. If you're looking for a particular instructional program, you can deselect other programs um, and then generate the report. But, um, and then I think we also had a question about the, as a CAPE manager, when you generate the DIR, you cannot see each agency's data. And Martha, correct me if I'm wrong, but if you generate the DIR you sh as a CAPE manager and not everybody has access to the CAPE manager level, um, you should be able to see each individual agency's DIR, but you might not be able to break down into student level data from that CAPE manager section. That is correct. That is correct. Um, and I'm not sure, I might need to follow up with Jay Wright about giving agencies access to student level data at that very high level, um, but a quick um, if you are a data manager looking for individual agency data, you'll have to talk with your individual agencies to gain that access if that's something that they approve of or not. Um, but yeah, and exactly what Diana said, it's for privacy issues. Um, and so you would have to talk with your individual agency if that's approved. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Thank you so much, Nicole, mm -hmm. for sharing this important information and addressing those questions on the chat pod. Thank you. So anything else that you would like to add, Tyler? Yeah, I just wanted to, uh, you know, uh, end, end the drill down feature on a, on a uh, ending note and say that, yeah, it is a very effective tool in changing your data or your, your uh, whatever is, uh, you know, you see that's been flagged or uh, you have like an overview of what you need to fix. Um, but also I wanted to, and you mentioned this earlier also, uh, Martha, that you can also uh, see what you can drill down. And these are all that's available to drill down. So th yes. that's a very uh, neat and useful tool. Um, but uh, yeah, that's, that's the drill down method, uh, that drill down functionality, really, uh, really powerful, useful tool. Exactly. Thank you so much, uh, Tyler, for explaining this section of the of the content here. 
Uh, could you, I would like to continue sharing my screen as well. Absolutely. Uh, thank you. There we go. So back into the reports um, section in here. There is another way that you can also print out reports from your listers. And that is like going to a specific lister. Uh, let's say I would like to show uh, that all the tests for the students who have tested within the month of July, August, and just July and August. So I would go to records, I would click on tests, it will populate this particular lister that we see on the far right. And with that, I will sort or search, I will actually filter in here for those date ranges. I will like to see people who tested within July 1st of this year towards and you can also you can just type it in or you can also use this drop down feature so you can go back in in the calendar here and be specific about the date ranges that you would like to see those tests so i wanted to see everyone who tested from july 1st to august 31st within those two months when i click ok this gives me a list of all the students who have tested and this is going to be sorted by uh, the latest tests um, you can also click on these little uh, sorting buttons so it can show us, it will give us a list of uh, since July 1st. So this will put it in, in a different order. As you can see, it goes down to the latest one, but I want to see from, J from July to July 1 all the way down to August. And if, I, if this is uh, the way that I want to display on my report, you can always click on the print button. The print button will allow you to be able to print this as a test report. Uh, you can click on this preview button so you can see how it's going to display it. And it's exactly this going to populate the same columns that we have, but because it's got many records, as you can see, it displayed 135 pages. Uh, worth of uh, test information or test data. Let's say I don't want to see the site. Uh, maybe it's not relevant for, uh, for our report, but we would like to see or include some other information. So I, I'm going to go back, back to this tests lister and I am going to right click on this column header in here. This gray area in the column header, I would right click and click hide site that way it will not be displayed uh, but let's say uh, display another feature so I would right click again and will show the class ID number uh, per se maybe it's not a good oh yeah some of them do have class ID numbers so this means that these tests are associated with a, a specific class not all of them um, have an association but some of them do so I will go ahead and click again on the print button as you can see those little dots that were uh, right here these are uh, it's a scrolling bar that will represent whenever something is um, updating in the system so again I'll print the I'll click on the print button first click on preview and while this is a little bit darker than usual it is now uh, refreshing and previewing everything else as you can see so this report will now show without displaying the site ID or the name and it will instead display the class ID which I requested to appear on the report and uh, you can always either export this format as is by clicking the export button and then picking and choosing an area on your computer. It could be your desktop or your documents and then click on the save button. You can also print it as is by selecting a designated printer on your uh, system, on your computer, and then proceed with a regular printout document. So this is another way, folks, of generating a report from a lister. You can always generate any kind of report from any kind of listers, actually. If you would like to see a list of all your classes, you can uh, add on a report format style. You can click on organization, classes, instances for 
per se. And uh, you can click on the more button. Uh, the print option is grayed out in here because it's still refreshing. As you can see, there's many, many classes that will have to wait until this loads. And now the print button is available. So when I click on the print button, it's going to give me this class instances report. Again, I'm going to click on the preview button. So this will show me like a little bit more elegant lister that you can provide to your, to your, um, to your teachers, to your staff members that need to know um, a class lister like this in a more a little bit efficient or uh, elegant way to show your class lister as a report style. Okay, again, it displays the time, the date, number of pages, name of the report. So these are all, oh yeah, and then I see a question from Diana. Thank you so much. You can also uh, switch to alphabetical list as well uh, with uh, the sortings that you would like to see on your designated uh, lister report. Okay, so that is a very uh, good question. Thank you so much, Diana. Uh, again, uh, here from the tests lister, as you can see, I went back, folks, into the last uh, tab for the tests. You can also customize these uh, names. You can sort it by last name. So I always, you can go into the columns and uh, assign it from here, from the columns lister, but you could also right click, which I found to be a lot easier uh, to right click and say show last name. So we will separate the name. You can also right click again and show first name. That way we don't need this full name column. So we will right click on it and hide it. And that way I will go ahead and sort this by last name. It's going to take a little while to sort names, uh, 3,649 names by, by first, by last name. So if I scroll the way up using the scroll bar towards the right hand side, it will sort them by, by, by last name. So I can also organize it that way. And again, uh, click a print preview of this report. So it will now alphabetize them by last name. Okay, hope all this is making sense and uh, showing you different ways of generating reports uh, from listers. And this, folks, is included in page number 16 of our uh, reports docu documentation that we're following through. Um, another way or another uh, area that I also wanted to explain is the reports manager. We already came here a little bit earlier, as you can see this tab open in here, but it, again, this is under the reports menu. The reports menu holds up report locator wizard and reports manager. I'm gonna go through this reports manager first and it should, it should be able to show me all of the sessions that have been previously displayed in here in this database. And this uh, is by client per per user, per client. So if you have your Tops Pro Enterprise client installed on your computer, you're probably not gonna see the reports that your coworker is doing on the, the other campus or on the other, um, on the other computer. So it's per user, per, per, per client, the, the list of reports that you're looking in here. This is a system-based uh, uh, database, so we can see other reports generated by other users as well. So you might uh, be able to see all this information in your own uh, client as well. So this, you can simply double click on this report and it will take you straight to the report that was generated back, back in that day and at that time. Again, from the reports menu under um, reports manager. Um, another important feature I'd like to show you is this reports locator wizard. Again, from the reports menu, I'm going to close this again and show you from the reports menu under reports locator wizard. Let's say uh, you don't know exactly the full name of the report, but it's some kind of um, integrity, integrity report. So I would just type in those key fields in the, um, in this, in this name, uh, 
search box here and it will bring me all the reports that would match that name. As you can see folks, we have several reports with that include integrity, the integrity name. Um, and I don't have to type in the entire name. I would just uh, type in a few, a few words in there and it will give me um, a lot of reports that would match that information. So for this purpose, I am going to do the CAPE Data Integrity once again. When I single click on it, it gives me all these buttons activated, either to launch or you can add to your reports as well. So if you would like to add it to my reports, these are my reports lister. I am, I can create a very, it's like my favorites lister for my favorite reports that I usually generate every quarter or every month or depending on, on your, your needs. You can also do that by coming into this uh, report locator wizard and then you can proceed to launch it from here. All right, when you launch it, it will give you, get you straight to the report general settings. So I'm gonna close this pop-up box now and take me to this report setting, which I can simply uncheck a specific program. If you'd like to see only like ESL students, then I would uncheck all of these other programs, which are uh, the nine program CAPE, CAPE areas. And I will just leave the ESL ELL and then hit the generate button, which will bring me different information than the prior reports that we were looking at because we just made a selection for ESL learners only. So here is going to be different numbers. This is a general summary information that includes every student population um, in this database. But as you can see from this uh, item count, you can see very different numbers than the prior report that we had. We had 27 people here in the missing birth date. Now it's showing me eight only because we have selected ESL learners as well. And another important thing that when we do any changes to the data, that means that we are missing out on including some important required information for your uh, CAPE reports. So that will show you as a preliminary report. Whenever you miss out or um, remove some of the important programs in the, in the area, uh, it will show you this preliminary word. And then if we scroll down to the criteria, that will be shown as well. It will get you, it will let you know which reports are running instead of the entire uh, nine program areas for the CAPE section. So the instructional program will only be ESL, ELL, if that is the, the desired option that we want to see on the report. So now, um, we have too many windows open right here on the top. Instead of going uh, and clicking every little checkbox on these tabs, we can click on the pages tab and say close all pages. And that will get us a, a clean slate of Tops Pro Enterprise so we can continue working on, on our training. So any questions folks so far? Everybody is very quiet. I hope that uh, this is not as boring as I think it could be. Uh, so hopefully all everybody is hanging out tight in there. And yes, uh, preliminary, I will indicate that in just a moment. Kristen, thank you for your question. So thank you so much, um, Ms. Hoffman, for the information. Oh, perfect. TE never boring. Yay, that is our purpose. Excellent. So uh, let's go to reports. Let's click on state reports and let's just generate for, uh, give it a little variety, uh, a different report. Let's do the CAPE tables. Uh, the CAPE tables is the CAPE summary report. Again, it includes all the nine CAPE program areas, folks, as you can see. They are selected there by default and every program or every report, I'm sorry, has its own uh, specific defaults as of programs, uh, program enrollment requirements. Uh, for instance, the CAPE tables will use all the nine program areas, but if I just wanted to see it for now this time for the ABE ASC, then I will go ahead and uncheck all of them and just leave the basic skills program area checked. By doing that, I know that I am releasing some of the important information out by unchecking those programs. So I'll go ahead and click on this generate button. And the generate button will 
uh, generate, of course, the report where you can see the preliminary word displayed on the top area. See, the preliminary report means that you're leaving some important information outside of this report. As you can see, there is none of the other information reporting in here. So I will go ahead and generate this same report as is without making any changes. And I'm going to put them in a comparison mode so you can see another nice feature. So I'll go to reports, state reports, California, K tables. Okay, now this time, folks, I'm not going to make any changes. I'll just go ahead and click generate as is and you're, so we can compare the difference. All right now, this once this report is generated, I'm going to do a split screen so you can see how uh, this other feature is embedded in here. So as you can see, now there's some information. So I will go ahead and click on this, um, let's say, two pages. Oh, um, pages button. If we click on the pages button, let's click on this new horizontal page group. When we do that, folks, it, you can see it splits the screen in half. So now we're going to grab this tab and drag it onto the other tab at the bottom. When we do that, it displays this report on the individual page. We're in the one of the half. Uh, in here and on the top half, I'm going to go back to our previous report. Okay, uh, now I'm going to unpin the navigator from both areas so you can see a little bit better. And then I will fit with this uh, subsection at the bottom. So as you can see, folks, we have two same reports. One is a preliminary, one is a real CAPE summary without any changes. Um, and if I scroll down, I will see all the important information as of to on all the, the programs for CAPE, whereas the one on the top, I'm only displaying data for ABE and some ASC that could be co-enrolled in both programs. So you can notice a difference. And on both reports is going to give you the generalized numbers at the bottom for the entire school population. The 8487 is listed on both. The 1168 again is for uh, listed on both reports. And now here on the enrollee section, you can see the difference in numbers. Okay, so again, folks, this is under the pages button. So you can do a split screen. You can also do a vertical page group or another horizontal. A page group so you can do these comparisons on your own screen or if you have two screens you can also open two instances of tops pro enterprise well uh, I, yeah. sorry go ahead. No, go ahead sorry to interrupt you i do see a question um i don't know if you know we're still talking about uh the uh, features of the CAPES table, but uh, I do see a question from Ryan in regards to protecting the success on the high set or GED score. If you can talk about that later on. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Rush on that. We're trying to take advantage the most we can for our time. Uh, so that, thank you so much for pointing that out, Tyler. I'll go ahead and quickly run um, well, before we leave the cake tables, I would also like to mention that when you open the cake tables report, you have this info button in here. Um, when you click on the info button, you're going to find this little hyperlink for cake summary. If you click on this CAPE summary, it will actually, I'm going to expand or maximize this pop-up box that will show you all the program areas definitions and it will give you this great description about um, all the CAPE programs and which areas you can find them in the TOPS Pro Enterprise program. So as I, you can also unpin this for a better display and as we uh, slowly scroll down, you can see where, uh, what this means, like uh, the description and about all these services, as well as where to find those data elements in TOPS Pro Enterprise. Like if you would like to see somebody who has a uh, high school diploma or HSC achieved, you can go to records, student records, and there you can find some educational results, education results, as well as work results, 
um, or services and skills, you can follow this little, it's like a cheat sheet uh, per se uh, that you can uh, go through and um, verify. And that is only available under the reports, the, the summary tables report. Again, I'm gonna pin that back and actually try to escape out of this. Uh, haha. Give me one little moment. So I'm gonna have to actually cover over and close the application. Again, folks, uh, you're gonna find it under the reports, state reports, California, Cape tables. On the Cape tables, click the info button. Okay, info button. Once we click on the info button, it will give you a pop-up box so you can go through. Oh no, summary tables, yes. Reports, state reports, California, Cape tables. I'm clicking on the info button once again, but this could be displayed on a different screen I have. So let me go ahead and close all the pages. This could be not displaying it correctly. So back to the state reports, Cape tables. I'll click on the info button. And for some reason, this doesn't want to display anymore, but follow that same pathway. Uh, the info button is not available on all the reports. So let's go into, yeah, that integrity, it does not show the info. Hmm. Well, my Tops Pro Enterprise, I may have to open another instance. So maybe it'll get displayed in there. Sorry about that, folks. And this happens sometimes on live webinars like these. So bear with me for just a moment. I am going to log in again as uh, another administrator. Let's see, administrator 21. Admin, all lowercase, would be a generic password for all administrator accounts. And then We'll try to demonstrate that once again with a new instance of Tops Pro Enterprise. And with that said, folks, we're going to also um, demonstrate that other question that we had. So going to, oh, and I have another question from Diana. Yes, all these features are covered in the activity packet, um, definitely. Uh, these little, sometimes little extra tips and tricks here on live webinars are also available only through the live webinars, but good thing that this is getting recorded. So um, we'll be posted on, on the CAPE website. And again, folks, I click on the info button and there you see the summary tables. This hyperlink will pop up where you can read through, you can print this if you'd like or export it and save it into one of your documents. And then uh, before generating the report, then you will have to X out of that so you can generate the report, all right? Um, another report that I wanted to show you is the individual skills profile. It's gonna be under the TUS results. So from the reports menu, click on TUS results and then click on the skills profile and then individual skills profile. This is a super neat report because uh, it gives you a wealth of information, especially for instructors on how to assess their students and instruct them in a, in a, in a greater sense. So here in the show, uh, so if we scroll down, when we get to the report setup navigator, remember folks, these sections don't have to be intimidating. So under uh, output layout parameters, which is right above the special options. You have this little feature called show grade level equivalent. So I've noticed that it's been very popular uh, lately, showing the grade level equivalent because it is an important feature that we want to know about our students. So I'll go ahead and say generate. So this report displays proficiently and show you all the necessary information for the students we have tested so far. So, uh, this report, if let me, uh, before, it, while it's generating, I'm going to go back into the report setup navigator. So, and I'm going to expand all these uh, areas here, these sections. Uh, this report 
folks now runs on four basic programs. As you can see, basic skills, ESL, high school diploma, and HSC. So that means that it requires the student to have a program enrollment into any of these four areas. If they don't have any of these four areas enrolled in, they're not going to pop up on your report. So that may be triggering something else to verify the program enrollments of your students. Now that this report has been generated, oh, Thank you. We have this uh, report has too many pages and it actually displays you the number in brackets here in parentheses, how many pages uh, it's displaying. And this report cannot display as lo longer than a thousand pages. So it would give me 5,000 pages. Uh, this is a good exercise that I wanted to that I'm glad that it came up because I wanted to show you then how to filter out some of the at data so we can look at specific classes and that way we'll get fewer pages. So I'll go ahead and close this last tab and then get back to the class instances. Um, I wanted to only, let's say, display a couple of basic skill classes so I can make a further uh, refinement here of the criteria by clicking on that little filter button under the instructional programs tab. I'll check basic skills only. And this will only give me a, a list of classes who have that basic skills program. It could be others as well. But from this is a more manageable area where I can uncheck this generally and just pick and choose, you know, a few classes here and there that include the ABE program and then proceed to generate. This will give me fewer uh, fewer than a thousand and thousands and thousands of pages. So then this will get generate um, a report for all those students who are enrolled in this class and have an ABE program enrollment. All right, so this probably isn't just, oh yeah, this one is. Um, for this student, it displays all the general information and the tests that they lastly tested on. This is a Rolling Hills, it's fictional data, so it includes records in the future, including in the future. So um, let's just ignore this for a little bit, but it will show you all the information that the student attempted during their tests, what skill score they, they got, what is the form level they tested on based on the locator, uh, the NRS level, as well as the grade level equivalent, folks. This is what a lot of agencies are, are trying to get from, from their test information. And this is the perfect report to generate for your instructors. And they can get all the reading competencies and what percentages that the students are, are doing well and the ones that are not doing very well. So they can enforce in that way uh, their instruction. And then it also gives you the likelihood on passing the GED or the high set test. Uh, these reports probably have not scored high enough, so I'm just scrolling down to see if another one of these have a criteria like that. But I guess I have to generate it for other classes. Again, folks, I encourage highly that you would access the Rolling Hills database. So I'm going to generate this again for a few more classes and hopefully see that uh, information that I wanted to display at the Martha, bottom. Martha, I do want to add uh, that I did receive a question in regards to this and um, it was only when uh, the math and reading goals were uh, the student had tested uh, been tested on those that it would show on um, the the prediction of their success uh, it's it's a little subsection on the bottom mm -hmm. so I, I noticed that with the math and reading goals Exactly, exactly. It does not populate for all the entire student population. It really depends much on the levels that they test on and the scores that they get so they can get that displayed. But I encourage you highly folks to run this and your on your local database. So you can, you know, learn more about your students, your programs and uh, how to properly display the required reports. And as of uh, for Kate reporting, as you may all know, you can find them under the reports menu under state reports, California, and then you will see all the different reports for the Kate data integrity, which is a quarterly reported, uh, quarterly required report. You can display this and generate it as is. So folks, um, are we running a little bit um, 
of time. We're at 2.26 right now. We had originally scheduled an hour and a half, but as you can notice, there is a wealth of documentation and a wealth of information that we could be sharing. So um, I highly encourage you folks to uh, look through you know, the Rolling Hills database through your own database. And thank you so much, Holly, for hosting this training. I see that you uh, have added a link for with this, um, for more trainings that you can folks register to, and also where you can get the, um, the recorded, the recording of this today's webinar. So folks, I hope all of you have find this information um, useful for to apply at your own local program. Um, any any further questions that anybody may have right now? And Tyler, Nicole, anything that you would like to add? I just want to say thank you everyone for uh, joining us today. Martha, thank you. Nicole, thank you. Holly, thank you. Uh, please uh, call us. Uh, you know, at tech support if you guys have any questions. Email us. Uh, our email is, I'm going to uh, put that in the chat. It's tech support at casas.org. Um, otherwise, thank you everyone for joining Perfect. us. Okay. Thank you so much, Tyler. I've also posted a couple of YouTube links to some previous workshop recordings that we have. They're kind of a little bit, um, older in the time, but they still contain the same information um, to generating reports. So if you have any chance, you know, check them out. Um, there's another report, a uh, couple of videos in there, and we shall be actually um, updating those soon. But I have another link that I also wanted to post for generating reports documentation. So be sure folks to uh, save your chat and that way you can come back for it to it for reference. Okay, well on my behalf, uh, this is this this would be all. I certainly appreciate your time in this webinar. And uh, if you have any questions, like Tyler said, you can always call us in tech support. We're always happy to help you and glad that you call us. Thank and you so much, Martha. And I would also like to thank Tyler and Nicole for helping out with this presentation. Um, it was very helpful and useful to the field. Uh, as Martha mentioned, this will be recorded and available on the website tomorrow at the California Adult Education website. I posted the link for that in the chat box. And as she stated, go ahead and hit, on, hit the three dots in the bottom right corner and go ahead and save a copy of this chat for your records. There was a lot of information, links, and questions answered in the chat. Um, before we say goodbye today, I wanted to remind everyone of some important items. I have posted links for everything in the chat again, and so you can save a copy. The CAPE 2020 Summit registration is open. The summit is virtual this year and free to attend. The theme is supporting adult learners through unprecedented change. We are getting a lot of registrations already, so don't miss the opportunity to sign up. Due to the current situation in California with all the fires, we have extended the call for proposals. So it now closes tomorrow, which uh, at 6 p.m. If you would like to present, go ahead and go online to that link I posted and submit your proposal. And then just we have some upcoming webinars that I think would be very handy for this group. First, we have the CAPE Accountability Basics webinar. On September 15th, we have the Cape Accountability Deeper Dive on September 22nd. And then if we have any consortia leads in this group or new administrators, we are hosting the Cape 2020 onboard training for new consortium leads and administrators on September 25th. So thank you to everyone for attending today. And again, thank you to the CASAS team for doing an amazing job. This was very helpful. I hope everyone Thank stays you. healthy and safe, and we look forward to seeing you all online soon. Yes. Thank you so much, Holly, for everything, and Tyler and Nicole. Yes. Everyone have a great day. <laughs>